Now, why don't we start with your thoughts in regards to international trade? Um, Donald made a number of pronouncements in this area. So why don't, why don't you give us your thoughts on, on how uh, some of those pronouncements and some of, uh, some of what are going to be his policies going forward or could be his policies going forward will affect the markets and the economy in general? Sure. So first, before I even get into that, I want to just 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 start with the uh, with the caveat that politicians often make some pretty strong promises during campaign periods, and and often the end result is watered down, um, or even just completely ignored after they after they enter office. So, uh, although Donald Trump has made a lot of really strong statements, we can't just assume that he's going to pursue these policies as aggressively as he said he would during the campaign. As well. Um, most of these policies are going to require support from Congress, and he's only going to be able to pursue them to the extent that he has that support. So even though he's made some pretty strong statements in certain areas, I think that right now we, we also have to take a bit of a wait-and-see approach and, and take what he said in the past with a grain of salt, because in, in a lot of cases, um, the, the, the initiatives that he wants to take are, are clearly outside the, the powers of the office of the president. So he will need support beyond just just himself and his his inner circle to, to do these things. But um, so international trade, you, you asked about international trade. So this is really the big one. This is where we see the most risk in his policies. He's taken a very protectionist stance. So he, he has come out as being anti-globalization. He thinks that globalization has um, cost American workers jobs with companies uh, outsourcing production, manufacturing operations overseas, and then selling into the U.S. market. So there's a number of things that he wants to do here. He wants to uh, renegotiate NAFTA. He wants to eliminate the Trans-Pacific Partnership. He wants to label uh, China as a currency manipulator, um, impose significantly higher tariffs on companies, produce products outside of the U.S., and he also wants to empower his regulatory officials to use whatever uh, legal options they have to to crack down on companies that he thinks are abusing the the current trade laws. So. When you look at something like this, this is this is it's really it's really uncertain how far he's he's going to be able to to take these policies. Uh, the United States is it's it's the economy is is based on trade. So just to start throwing up a a ton of trade trade barriers all of a sudden and 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 attacking your trading partners is is not is not what we think. We we don't believe that that is going to result in strong economic growth and jobs for the country, and and we're hoping that his administration figures that out as well. There's certainly changes he can make, um, smaller changes that could potentially result in a stronger job market in the United States. But if he starts erecting trade barriers with other countries, then those countries are going to respond in kind. They're going to erect trade barriers with the United States. And when that happens, basically what you have is is, is a trade war. So um, how, are, how are companies that uh, are, are international companies, national companies in the United States, they're, they're going to they're gonna lose their access to, to international markets as well. So this, this is an area that, um, that we're hoping he He's going to really soften on as he kind of looks at the numbers and, and, and makes some decisions here. And he's also, in, in many cases, I believe, going to have to have the support of Congress to, to enact some of these policies. You know, NAFTA, obviously, that's of particular importance to, to Canada. He, he wants to re renegotiate or, or eliminate NAFTA. For the most part, he's been, he's been singling out Mexico and not Canada, but I'm sure that, that somehow Canada is going to get caught in that as well. It's really too early to tell what that's going to look like, and and we advise people not to panic. But we also have to have to keep in mind that you know NAFTA has actually been amended several times since it was first brought into force in in 1996. So going back to the table and making a few changes is not necessarily going to be going to be a horrible thing for for the Canadian economy. I'd also I'd also like to point out that while the United States is our largest consumer of goods, we are actually the largest consumer of goods um, that the United States sells as well. So we do obviously we are more dependent on them than they on, are on us, but we are still their largest customer. So we're optimistic that whatever these changes are, they, they're not going to be disastrous to the Canadian economy.